Sure. So, yes. So I want to start by saying, we just went around the table shaking our hands. Is this all part of uh, the brand new likable Murphy? <laughs> no, I, I think that's just part of Richard Arm being a decent human being. <laughs> I was, I, 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 was, I was taught uh, by my parents at a very young age, when I meet people, I should shake their hand, smile, and, uh, you know, let's get on the right foot here. So, that's what we're all doing now, and I hope you like me now. <laughs> so, so, actually, you, your character is the one that had the biggest growth this season, and the one that everyone all of a sudden loves. Can you talk a little bit about the evolution of Murphy? How much time do you got? Um, yeah, Murphy's come so far, I think. But I, I think a lot of that is he has grown in, in his own right, but I think a lot of kind of the growth that the audience sees has more to do with the amount of time that the camera spends on him now. I think he was this person in the first couple seasons, it's just you only stuck around with him through the bad. Like, well, he's still an asshole, he's still not a nice person. But he, he's got a good moral compass, and I think the longer the camera stays on him, the more you kind of realize that. And I think that's kind of the most important part of the growth is that he's just growing as a character and kind of how much we see it, which is good for me. Where would you like to see him go next season? I want him to continue uh, following his own path. Do what he thinks is right. Um, I love it when he cares about things. You know, he's such a he's such a relentless person. I've, I've always said it. Like, if Murphy's fully on your team, I don't think you have a better soldier. Like, he's, he is just so dedicated to what he believes. He's willing to die for it. And the, and the, the amazing thing about Murphy is the fact that he never really questioned Clark like everyone else. I mean, he never blamed Clark for actually saving his ass. Yeah, <laughs> so, true. I mean, there was no question there. there was yeah, just, no, no, fair. There was you just know, fair. Fair statement. But um, what are your theories about what's going to happen? I know you guys haven't started filming, yeah, but yeah. what are your theories about what's going to happen with the week in the yeah. Theories of what's going to happen next season, mm -hmm. with the whole doomsday and everything. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, Theory-wise, I don't know, because they haven't told us yet what, what's going to happen. I don't know, is the world going to come to an end? Like, are we all going to die? Who knows? So, yeah, I have no idea. I'm just kind of waiting to find out. <laughs> Tough, question. Oh, Tough question for you. If you were put in the same shoes as Clark was, would you have made the same decision? Or, I mean, would Murphy have made the same decision? Or what decision do you think Murphy would have made? Pull the lever. I said the same. I said this last year about Mount Weather because someone asked me that about like with Murphy had pulled the lever and at Mount Weather and radiated all those people. And I said if Murphy was in Mount Weather, he would have had him out of there by episode three. And the nice thing is you would have pulled the lever and not wine. Oh, absolutely! Too. Like they were just like, okay, if you pull that lever, like we're out of here. But all those people died. <laughs> night, <laughs> night, <laughs> sleep time. It's time for the good rest. So what? What's been your favorite Comic Con moment? You, you guys have been here for three years. What's been your favorite moment? So I, this is my first Comic Con. Actually. Oh, yeah, my first one ever. I've done conventions before, but this is my first Comic Con, and honestly, it's it's like a is dream. It your mind? It's a dream come true. <laughs> Is, is there anyone that you haven't met that you'd actually really like to meet at the Comic Con? Here? Oh, man. I, is Killian Murphy here? For anything? Oh, he's, God. He's, he's been in the past. If yeah. he's here, then yes, because I'm on a real Peaky Blinders roll right now. Like, I think that's, don't tell my own show, but probably the best show I've ever made. We're talking about Murphy. Like, I see him as he has loyalty in the end to himself. To himself, yes. And so is it pretty much that we can just keep an eye out for as long as what he wants aligns with what's happening around him to follow, but he'll, if he'll, it doesn't yeah. align with him? He'll leave in an instant. If what Bellamy and Clark are doing and, and setting up the rest of the team, if Murphy doesn't believe in it, you can expect him to go immediately. He, does, he, does, he holds no love loss. And do you think Murphy's growth is attributed to the fact that he didn't stick around and wasn't around all those people? He, he, he's, he's had his own journey, man. Like, they've all been doing this stuff together. Journey, his, Murphy's just kind of been on his own, and that's got to be tough, but also kind of, it made him go. Oh, hey! Oh Sorry, what were you talking about? <laughs> Am I done or are we no, doing no, this together? No, no, we're doing it together. We're doing it together. I think, yeah, we, I'd like to talk about the 
dynamic between the two of your characters. You go first. Yeah. Which one? I, what I'd like to know if that's where we're going to see more of that. You, you picked me up at the beginning of season two. Season two. How could you forget? I put you in jail. I locked you up. You did? <laughs> Me and you are on the same side now. So <laughs> <think that's laughs> we don't really, uh, to be honest, we haven't had much interaction, but we don't, we don't really feature. Uh, I don't really see you on my radar very often, not um, and, 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 and vice versa, I don't think. So, but I think we are going to have some stuff at the beginning of season one. We must, because we're all on the no, same. No, we do. We're all on the same. We not read the script. Okay. So, so <laughs> who's going to that scene was always the insignificant for him. I was really a good hump in a play. Okay. So, so where's, where's Kane's headspace at? at the beginning of, where do you think Kane's headspace is going to be at at the beginning of season three? Oh, pretty much with everyone. We're all suffering. We're all in pain. We're all bloodied up. You know. Uh, we're all injured and we're all um, feeling terrible about what's happened. Uh, so I, lot, I think there's a lot of uh, post-traumatic stress. But you already had that. At some point, you guys gotta like lighten up, lighten up, and then deal Let's with see the what's, ha what's just happened. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? Let's see how we can lighten this situation. Um, we're surrounded by dead bodies everywhere. We've been shipped. You know, someone else has taken over our minds. We were trying to kill Clark. Uh, a lot of us fell off that wall. We murdered 300 people in their sleep. So how did they get down from the wall? How did we get down from the wall? <laughs> yeah. Nobody knows. Because they were all shipped while you were climbing the wall. I know, but, but do you think that's really interesting? I mean, do you want to see an episode of people coming down from the wall? I think I want to ask for that. I mean, we, obviously, we obviously come down, right? <laughs> Otherwise, we're stuck. We're like, what kind of show is that? But yeah, so yes, there will be. A, obviously, we are in, bright enough to get down from <laughs> the tower. We figure it out because we have, you know, we've got to save the world. Right, right exactly. So, so. Considering, considering. Oh, no. Because, uh, yes. it, it, he has romance with Adam. Yes. And uh, so, how's that? Uh, how do you engage with, with all that? That's so strange, you know, it's not something that, you know, we don't, uh, I mean, we get on, you know, we, but, uh, it kind of snuck up on us. I mean, they kept on saying, oh, there might be something going on then, and then, because we were always, you know, you know, arguing in season one and season two, and then, and actually, I was just speaking to that table over there, and I kind of think, Cain changed so much since he landed on Earth, so that could have something to do with but the fandom calls Kane the cinnamon roll. Sorry? The fandom calls Kane the cinnamon roll. The cinnamon roll? Yeah, so... I've never heard that. So, so basically, they're saying you're sweet and nice now. Nice and fluffy. Yeah, nice and fluffy. So, you so considering, questions. you know, Kane's been a leader always, you know, in the past... Trying what? Trying to. Yeah. Trying to, yes. And then considering what's happened in the last season, how do you think that's going to affect his leadership, you know, and to come considering what he's done when he was under the influence? I think at the end of uh, season two... He wasn't the, the Chancellor, Pike was. Mm -hmm. uh, season three, sorry. So, I think Kane just, just wanted everyone to live in peace, the Grounders and the Arthurs. It wasn't so much about being leader, just for the sake of being leader. He wanted a peaceful way, and, and, and I think he always saw Bellamy as the future leader. Um, and now that's, that's all up in the air. So, again, we're back to dealing with. You know, saving, saving the, the human race. Do, do you think we're going to meet any new archers next season? Because yes. they pretty much killed everyone this season. Well, we have to then. We'll have to replace them with something, right? <laughs> yes. they'll, they'll come from another tribe. Yes. Some other so, tribe will turn up. No, they are going to be, yes, they are going to be some, some new um, characters during the show. It, would, would that be from other uh, Fallen Station or just new characters that were always there in the background? Um, from the script that I read, there are going to be new, new, um, new people turning up. But I don't know if they're going to be regulars or recurring or what, you know, so okay. that's all I have. With, with the fact that literally, like, you know, Kane lost the 
his own identity through the chip. Wow. I mean, oh, yes. Yeah, so right? yeah. I mean, he basically, for a while there, was like a completely different person. And there are, like you mentioned, the things that he's done under that influence. Does that color the next season and him kind of refining who he is within this whole structure? Uh, I think Kane's very good at forgiving himself. And, um, so no emo stuff is what you're saying. I don't think Kane. I don't think Kane, you, I don't think you'll see much emo stuff from Kane. I mean, maybe in his room by himself. That's not on camera. So. And then, and then, what's the one? A lot of people raised quit the show last season. So, what's the one thing you could tell fans to get them to come back and really like fall in love all over again? Uh, did you say they fell out of love with the show? They kind of, yeah, there was a, they, with, over the whole collection stuff. Oh, so, there was a little bit of upset, and some people stopped watching the show. Right, some really? That way. Uh, you know, the show is more than Plexa, mm -hmm. you know, so, so I, I, mean, I don't tell people what to do or what to think, just, you know, if you like the show, watch the show, or if you don't, don't watch it, and, you know, like, yeah. if you like it, I wouldn't it. count on Kane and Abby either, I gotta tell you, I don't think Kane said it's okay. Yeah. You don't think Kane and Abby's gonna no, work out? I think they might work out, but I, I think that one of the things I like about them is they've changed a number of times, and so they, I They've grown. Yes. That's what, they haven't changed. They've just grown. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks Thank very much. You. Thank you.